This is Price Boss, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to scrape lots and lots of ads from Zillow and turn them into usable comps to develop very accurate pricing for your offers. It's really simple. There's only three things you have to do. We're going to filter leads in Zillow to get just those properties that uh, correspond to whatever is in your list. We're going to copy those leads into the Price Boss, and then we're going to hit the button, compute, and the tool's going to do all the rest. So let's take a look and see how that works. So here is Price Boss, and we are on the Zillow tab. Now notice there are three different sections. In this left section, column A, this is where we're going to paste the data from Zillow. Then in the middle section is where the actual data that we're going to use it will go. And then the one thing that's not going to be included when we get this data is the subdivision. That's what we're trying to figure out because we like, if possible, to price on a subdivision basis. So it's also going to give us, us information over here on the left hand side, or excuse me, on the right hand side, and we're going to use this information to help figure out the subdivision. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to open up a new pet tab and I'm going to go to Zillow. And I'm going to use the same search I use for all of these just so that we can get an apples to apples comparison. So we're going to go down here to Klickitat County, Washington. And I just want to see for sale, um, and I'm going to use by agent or by owner, and recently sold. And we're going to do zero to $50,000 properties or asking price. Here in the home uh, type, we're just going to select lots land. And you can do other things if you want. You can come into this more tab and you can specify a, uh, a range or a minimum uh, acreage if you want to, uh, or even how many days it's been uh, on Zillow. If you want to only get more recent uh, leads, that's fine. We're not gonna worry about any of that right now. So here they are, here are our leads. And again, just like uh, in Landwatch, I like to put the newest ones first. Now, I can see that there's 195 results. That's an awful lot. We're not going to bring all of them in for this demonstration, but we're going to bring in a few. So I like to start at the bottom here. I come below the bottom ad, which the bottom right-hand ad, which is this one right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right below it, and I'm going to press on the left button of my mouse and hold it as I drag up. And I'm still holding it, and I'm going to get right here to the top of the top left ad, and I'm going to release the button, and I'm going to right-click and hit copy. And now I'm going to copy all of this data over to my yellow bar here. Don't worry about the little pop-up. And it's going to automatically take care of a little formatting for us so it'll look right. But I'm not going to stop right now because there is more data to be had. So I'm going to put it to the next blank space. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to click to the next set of data, a set of properties. Again, I'm going to hold down the left button of my mouse and scroll up. And I'm going to copy it and come over here and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to do one more just for good measure. Now it's going to just reformat all this, make sure it looks good. So we'll give it a second to do that. There we go. And I'm going to come down to my third page. Now it's very important that you be careful in how you select this data because sometimes, for example, if I did it from over here, well, it is working okay. But you want to make sure that it's capturing and you're, you're seeing that all of the data is turning blue. So just be very careful in how you do this. And just come down here below. I don't want any extra data. And I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. Now with Zillow, I just like to come down to the bottom and just make sure it right. Sometimes you'll see some added stuff down here, just numbers like page numbers and things like that that you don't want. Just go ahead and delete those if those are there. But this is good. So we've got three pages of data. Let me come back to the top. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my compute button. Now there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So this takes a little bit longer than it does with Landwatch. Well, in this case, it's not doing too bad, is it? Um, but give it, give it a little time. It's still working. Still doing a little bit of magic. 
setting up all these property links and making sure they're correct. Just about done. Now I'm going to come down here to the bottom. Now it's still working. It's still working these links here. So give it another second. There we go. And I want to make sure that I've got even across the bottom and I like to just test, right? So I'm going to go to the bottom one. I want to, and, and the great thing about with the Zillow is that I've got this column here, property link. So one, it tells me either the date it was sold or how many days it's been on Zillow, but it also, it's a link. So I can actually open up the ad right from here. So I want to open up this ad and I want to make sure that it says that the price is 39.5, it's five acres and it's on Sunset Drive to make sure that all the data is lining up properly. So if I own it, there it is, Sunset Drive, five acres, 39.5, perfect. And if I want to go in, I can look in and I can read the, read the details and maybe get some more information to help me with this. And sometimes that's, that's necessary. Um, but I can see right now, and then notice with, with, with Zillow, it's not always for sale. The type can either be for sale or sold. And that's going to be important when we get into the analysis side of things because a sold comp means it's already been sold. That's a real comp. So I don't want to make any changes to this number. But if it's for sale, this is just 48000 This is just what somebody's asking for it. So I may assume that when it actually sells, it's going to sell at a discount to that. We're going to be able to, to tweak those numbers a little bit. We'll get that into a, a later section. But here we are. Um, I can. I have the address right here. I've got the town, the nearest town for the property, and I've got the links. And, and so I can go into the individual ads and it, it help me figure out subdivisions. Now, if I, don't, if I can't figure out subdivisions, and that's often the case, um, I could just use the town. So for the, just to make things easier right now, I'm just going to use the town. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it over here into subdivision, and this is this will be useful later because I've got it. I've got to set up all my subdivision data, and don't think that it's just because it says subdivision it has to be subdivision. What we're really trying to do is we're trying to be able to group properties into smaller geographical units that are closer together, and therefore will most likely be more aligned in their pricing. Because as we know, pricing can vary greatly from one side of a county to the other. So we're trying to get it into smaller groupings and that's what this does. Um, this information again on the right is really just there to help you figure out this subdivision information. And that's all there is to it. We have just pulled 75 comps from Zillow and they, we could have pulled quite a few more. I mean, we only did up to page three. There's uh, eight pages of, of comps here. And, uh, and here it is. And we're gonna be able to use all of this information uh, when we do our analysis. Good luck.